What's up guys, we're back with another video in my iOS interview question series. It's focusing on coding challenges. Today's challenge is gonna be what's known as the two sum problem. Now the premise of this problem is that you have an array of numbers and you need to find out if there's two numbers in that array that add up to a certain sum. For example, if my sum is 21, you need to return a Boolean whether there's two numbers in this array that equal 21. Sounds like a simple problem, right? But the beauty of the two sum problem is that there are multiple ways to solve it, all with varying degrees of efficiency. And that's where the tricky part comes in, finding the most efficient solution for this fairly simple problem. And I'm gonna walk you through and explain each of those solutions in Swift. All right, let's go. All right, so let's restate the problem real quick here on line four. We wanna return a Boolean value if there are two numbers in the array that equal a sum. And then here on line five, I have my numbers array, which is some random uh, sorted numbers. And as you can see here, there's gonna be three different ways we're gonna solve this problem, uh, but we're gonna start with brute force here on line nine. Now, if you've never heard the term brute force before, that's usually the most basic solution. However, it's almost never the most efficient solution. It's usually a bad solution, but it is a solution. So we always try to find that first and then improve upon it with future solutions. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna compare each number to every other number. So for example, we're gonna use a nested for loop. We're gonna compare one to three and see if that equals our sum. And then one to six, and then one to seven, and then one to seven. And then once we've gone through comparing one to everything, we're gonna to go to three and compare three to everything. And then go to six and compare six to everything. We're gonna keep going. And as you can see, that takes a very long time. And like I said, that's probably not the most efficient, elegant way to solve this problem. However, when solving these interview problems, it's highly recommended to find the brute force solution first. That way you get at least a solution and then improve upon it later. So let's build our brute force solution. So our function signature is gonna be func, uh, let's call it brute force to sum. And it's gonna take in an array, which is going to be an array of int. And then it's also gonna take in a sum, which is again, the value we're gonna be looking for. And it's going to return a bool. And let's go ahead and just put that return in there so Xcode doesn't yell at us. Uh, I'll just do it false for now. And let's go ahead and call the function here uh, real quick. So it's gonna take in numbers and then sum, say 23 uh, to start. Okay, so that's just our basic function setup. And like I mentioned, it's just gonna be a nested for loop. And what a nested for loop is, is basically a for loop inside a for loop. So let's create our outside for loop first. Okay, so this is our outside for loop, and this is just gonna iterate through every object in the array. So it's gonna go one, three, six, seven. And then at each object, we wanna do another for loop where we add these two together and check to see if they equal our sum. Let me write it out and I'll explain it. Okay, so here on line 14 through 16 is our nested for loop. So we're gonna iterate through the array again. However, this where statement, so where j not equal to i, basically what that is saying is don't count where we're currently at in the iteration. Let me walk you through a real example. So up here on line five in our numbers array, let's say we're starting with one. So we wanna compare one to three, six, seven, seven, 12, and 14. However, we wanna do it where j is not equal to i. So for example, I don't wanna compare one to one. And the reason being, let's say my sum was the number two down here. Now nothing here added together equals two. However, if I didn't have this where clause on line 14, it would compare one and one in both for loops, and then I would get a sum of two, which really isn't the case. So this where clause makes it so that I'm not adding the same number to the number I'm comparing. Okay, now we need to type out that addition logic. I'll type it out and explain it. Okay, so let's talk about what's going on here on line 16 to 21. So I'm adding the value for object at index J to the value for object at index I and seeing if it equals our sum. And if those do equal our sum, I'm gonna print true, print the two values and return true. If it doesn't equal our sum, I'm just gonna print false with the two values. And I'm printing these out just to show you how this is actually working. So let's actually walk through it. Let me move my console up a little bit and scroll down. So you can see we'll start from the beginning. So the very beginning of this for loop is gonna start at one up here on line five. And then the J for loop is going to also compare everything in the array. However, because of this where clause, we're gonna skip the first one because we don't wanna compare one to one. And that's what you can see is happening down in the console. Um, the first one is one plus three. So one plus three does not equal our sum of two. Remember two is what we have in there. So that's gonna be false and it's gonna keep going. So now it's gonna compare one to six. And as you can see down here in the console, one to seven, and then we move on through the array. So three plus one, and then we're doing three plus six, three plus seven. So this is just comparing everything to each other in the array. Again, this is called brute force. This brute force solution, and pretty much any time you have a nested for loop is going to be n squared in big O notation. Let me take a step back and do big O notation real quick. It's basically just how you measure the efficiency of an algorithm. 
So as you can see in this chart, if you look at the pink line, that is the O of N squared line. As you add more elements to the array, you can see that line just take off and it takes longer and longer and longer. So this type of algorithm gets much worse the bigger the array is. And that's the key thing. So yeah, sure, if you have an array of 10 objects, it doesn't really matter what kind of algorithm you're gonna do because it's gonna be relatively the same. However, in real life, you can be dealing with arrays that have millions and millions of values in it. So that's when efficiency really comes into play. And as you can see with O of N squared here, the pink line, the more items you add into it, the longer and longer it takes, and it can get out of hand real fast. Okay, so that's our brute force solution. Like I said, it's not the best solution, but it is a solution to start from. And again, we're just using a nested for loop and we're comparing each number to every other number in the array. All right, let's move on to our next solution. Go ahead and comment out line 29. So we're only running one solution at a time. Okay, the next one we're gonna talk about is using binary search for the complement. And actually, let me go ahead and copy this array down here so uh, can see it visually in each one of these solutions. Okay, so binary search for the complement. Now, if you watched my previous video, you should be familiar with binary search. And I have my binary search helper method way down here at the bottom, which is the exact same method I did in that video. Check it out if you haven't seen it. So now for this solution, instead of comparing every number to every other number, we wanna be a little smarter about it. We know that each value has to have a complement to our sum. So here on line 33, let's say our sum is 10. So the complement for one is going to be nine because one plus nine is 10. The complement for three, is going to be seven, because three plus seven is 10, the complement for six is gonna be four, et cetera, et cetera. So what we can do in this solution is iterate through our array, and for each value, figure out the complement, and then do a binary search for that complement. Now this is gonna be more efficient than our brute force solution. Let's talk about that real quick. So looking at this chart, binary search by itself is log n, which is this orange line down near the bottom. That's pretty good, we like that. So as you can see, as the array gets bigger, not much increases, this is asymptotic. And if you have a log n algorithm, that's usually a very good thing. That means you, you've done well. However, we have to run binary search for each of our values. So we have to run binary search n times, where n is the number of values in the array. So doing a binary search for the complement is actually gonna be n log n, which if you look at this chart is this red line in the middle. So you see it's better than n squared, the pink line, but it can still get away from you pretty quick as the size of the array grows. So this solution is an improvement over brute force, but it's not the best, but we're still gonna walk through it real quick anyway. All right, so again, this solution is what's known as n log n, as you saw in the previous chart. Um, let's go ahead and write our function signature. Okay, the function signature is basically the same as before. I mean, I changed the name, but we're still taking in an array and then also taking in a sum that we're looking for. Uh, and then I just return false for now. And then I'm calling it down here when we're looking for the number 10. Okay, so let's go ahead and write this out. So uh, first thing we wanna do is write our for loop. All right, now that we're iterating over our array, let's go ahead and find our complement uh, for each value. So it's fairly straightforward here on line 44. We're just taking the sum and subtracting the value at index i. So for example, to start off at one, uh, we're looking for six here on line 50. So six minus one is gonna be five. So five is the complement to one. That's what we're gonna look for in binary search. Okay, now that we have our complement, we need to adjust our array a little bit. And the reason we need to do that is because our complement could be the number we're looking at. Let me explain. So again, here on line 50, we're looking for two numbers that add up to six. So as we iterate through the array, once we get to the number three, the complement to three is also three. So when we do binary search and we search through this whole array again, we're gonna be looking for the number three. Well, three is gonna be in there, but it's also the same number we're trying to evaluate against. So we don't want that. So we need to adjust our array a little bit to remove the object we're looking at so we don't run into this situation. So let's code that up. Okay, all we're doing here on line 46 and 47 is we're creating a var because we need to mutate this array. So we don't wanna use let call temp array and we're setting that equal to our array. And then here on 47, we're just removing the object at index i. So again, that's just removing the object we're evaluating against. So when we pass this array into our binary search, we're not looking for that same object. Going back to our example, we're looking for the number six. When we get to the number three and we look for the complement for three, we're gonna remove three from the array so we don't find the same number we're looking at. Now looking at my binary search helper method down here, here on line 86, you see it returns a Boolean. So let's go ahead and back up here and um, set a Boolean variable. So let has complement equal binary search. And the array we're gonna pass in is temp array, because remember this is the one we just created. Uh, and the key we're gonna look for is complement. And let me go ahead and create a print statement. Okay, let me run through lines 49 to 54 real quick. So again, this has complement variable is a Boolean, and that is the return value of our binary search, which again, down here on line uh, 86, we run binary search on the array and it returns a Boolean. And if you're not familiar with binary search again, uh, check out my video I, I released yesterday on it. Back up here, 
So if, if has complement is equal to true, meaning we did our binary search, we found the complement, we're gonna go ahead and print that out and then return true. So in our first example, we're looking for uh, two numbers that sum up to six. And you see it's returning false. And you can see here down in the console that it went through each of the numbers and there is no complement. So let's change this to a number we know is in there. So 26, because 12 and 14 equal 26. So you can see it goes through all the numbers, no complement, no complement, no complement. And then finally, true, number 12, and then the complement is 14, and that equals 26. Uh, let's try 14, and then we should get seven and seven down here in the console. So yep, false, 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 true, uh, number is seven, complement seven. Now let's try four. We should get a, a very shorter list here. So yep, it found the number is one, and then the complement is three. So again, to recap up here on line 35, we're just iterating through this array and then uh, getting the complement for each of these numbers and then doing binary search on this array uh, to see if that complement exists within the array. And again, this is an n log n function, which if you look at this chart here, not the greatest, but still better than the brute force one. So let's keep improving on this and do one more. Okay, down here, let's uh, highlight out line 61. So we're not continuing to run that all the time. All right, let me take a step back and show you a quick rundown of how this solution works. Okay, so a quick overview of this solution. What we do here is we put pointers at the very low end of the array and at the high end of the array. And then what we do is we add those up, uh, in this case is 15, and if that is greater than the sum we're looking for, and right now our sum is 10, then we, we adjust the pointers accordingly. So let me illustrate that to show you using 10 as an example. So again, 14 and one is 15, that is higher than 10. So what we do is we move our high pointer down one place. So now it goes from 14, to 12. Now we do that again, we add them up. 12 plus one is 13, that is still greater than 10, so we're gonna keep moving this pointer down. So now we're at the seven. Now we add seven and one, that is eight. Ah, now here's where it's different. Eight is less than 10. So now we move our low pointer up one to the three. So now when we add them together, seven plus three equals 10, and we found the value we're looking for, everything's good to go. And as you can probably tell, these pointers keep getting closer and closer to each other. And the way we can find out if the value is not in the array is if these values cross. Okay, so as you just saw, our pointers are gonna start off at one and 14, and then we're gonna have to adjust them accordingly. So let's go ahead and write that out. Uh, first, we're gonna start off with the function signature, and it's gonna be pretty much the same as the other ones. Okay, just like the previous examples, I have my function name. It takes in the array, which is gonna be our numbers array. And then it takes in the sum, which is what we're gonna find two numbers that add up to, and then it returns a Boolean. Uh, and then down here on line 75, I'm just calling that function uh, for the playground. So as you saw in that previous clip, we need two pointers, and they start off at the lowest index and the highest index. So let's get those. So you see we have var low index equals zero, and then var high index equals array.count minus one. And these are both the ends of the array, and they need to be vars because we are gonna be adjusting these as we go. So for this solution, we're gonna use a while loop, if you're unfamiliar with a while loop, it's kind of like a for loop, except a while loop is gonna to continue to run until it meets a condition when it stops. Let me write that out and it'll make more sense. So my condition is while the low index is less than the high index, I'm gonna keep executing this code. The minute the low index is not less than the high index, we're gonna stop and return false. In the previous clip, remember when I explained when the two pointers cross, that's how we know we don't have the values we're looking for. Well, this is them crossing. When the low index is no longer less than the high index, they must have crossed, so we stop our loop. Okay, so the first thing we have to do on our loop is get the sum of the two pointers. Remember, our pointers are starting out at, up here on line 67, uh, they're starting out at one and 14. So we have to get those values and add them together. So let's do that. So that's pretty straightforward. So let sum of items equal the object at low index, which again is gonna start at zero, which is going to be one and then we're gonna add it to the object at high index, which is going to be 14 to start, and we're gonna compare that sum to the sum we're looking for, which in this case is 30, and then we're gonna do other stuff. Now, if you look over here, you can see this has been run almost 60,000 times. This brings up a good point of infinite loops, and I had to stop it. If I didn't hit stop, this would have been going up into the millions and millions and millions. The reason that happens is because this condition never stops. So I need to make sure in my loop to be updating my low index and high index so that this condition will stop eventually. That's the big thing to remember with while loop. If you're writing a while loop, make sure that you don't get stuck in what's called an infinite loop. All right, so from here on out, it's just an if statement. Let me type it out and I'll explain it. Okay, let me explain line 79 to 88. Again, the first check in the if statement is if sum of items is equal to the sum we're looking for, then let's go ahead and print that out and then we'll return true. We're good to go, we found it. However, if it's not equal to the sum, now we check if the sum is less than the sum we're looking for. 
Because remember, if it's less than the sum, we want to move the lower pointer up one. So that's what we're doing here. Low index, uh, we're incrementing it by one. And then the third check, like I mentioned in the explanation, uh, we're checking if it's higher than the sum. And if it is higher than the sum, we're going to move the high index down one. And again, those pointers are going to get closer and closer to the middle, either until we find two values that add up to the sum we're looking for, or if they cross and we don't have the value. So down here, let's go ahead and make a print statement there that they have crossed. And because we're looking for 30, and then you can tell easily that none of these add up to 30, the pointers cross and we return false. Now let's pick a sum we know is in there. Uh, let's do 13, because that's six and seven. And it looks like I messed up my print statement a little, but you get the idea. So sum of one and 12 equals 13. So let's walk through what happened real quick. Our pointers start off at one and 14. We went through the loop, the sum of the items is 15. It didn't equal 13, so we don't go into here. Um, if the sum of the items is less than the sum, that's not the case because our sum currently between one and 14 is 15. So we go into this bottom else if statement, if some of the items, which again is 15, is greater than the sum, which is 13, let's move our high index down one. So instead of the high index being at 14, now the high index is at 12. So now we're at one and 12, and we go back in the loop, we add those two together, and it equals our sum this time. This example only happened to take one step, and then we go ahead and return true and print out uh, the sum of one and 12 is 13. Let me clean up my print statement and we can do just a bunch of different examples. So like I said, 99, you can see it's going to print out pointers have crossed. Uh, let's go ahead and do, let's see, I know 19's in there, 19. Say sum of seven and 12 equals 19. We have a seven and 12. So you, you get the idea. And looking at the efficiency of this algorithm, this is a linear solution. The reason it's linear is because we're not gonna have to go through the array more than once. At each value in the array, we're moving the pointers. So worst case scenario, we're only gonna have to iterate through the array once to get our pointers to where they need to be, whether they either cross or they find the values. So looking at our big O chart, this is what's called a linear solution, meaning it's O of N. And a linear solution is a pretty good solution. Let me throw out a huge disclaimer. I'm speaking as a general rule of thumb. Obviously, the efficiency you need is gonna be very specific to your situation. But in general, if you're linear, log N or constant, um, you're doing pretty good. Anything above linear, when you get into the exponentials, like the O of 2N, O of N squared, O of N log N, where you can see they start taking off on you, uh, that's when you have a pretty bad algorithm. So you wanna be linear or below, as a very general rule of thumb. So there's the two sum problem, and it's a great example of how a very simple question can have many different solutions. And I didn't even cover all the solutions, but it can have many different solutions with many different efficiencies. And you can see how complex it can get. And like I said, this is a pretty simple problem, but it is a small example of what you can expect during the coding challenge portion of your interviews. So there's a few different solutions to the two sum problem written in Swift. And if you didn't follow all that or you found some parts confusing, don't worry, go ahead and leave a comment. I'll jump in there and answer any questions I can. All right, if you found this at all useful, go and hit subscribe. I got more coding challenge videos on the way.